AM's Rustoff laser cleaning systems are truly remarkable. I have a really small one and a really big one, and today we're going to compare the two to find out which one is best suited for you. Laser Master. Master the laser. To start off with this list of comparisons, we're going to be talking about power. Let's talk about the 1000 watt Rustoff machine here. So this one requires a 25 amp minimum breaker on your circuit. Otherwise, you might run the risk of overloading a circuit breaker and damaging some of the components on this machine. Now, if we had to look at our smaller unit here, this one only requires a 16 amp breaker and it's only a 50 watt machine, so you run no risks of overloading anything as long as you have those power requirements. Now, talking about power, we have to keep in mind this one using a 25 amp breaker, this one using 16 amps, you can still, on both of them, use a normal three pin, and you don't have to use bigger sources of power, which makes a very big difference being able to plug this into almost any wall as long as your circuit breaker can handle it. Our next category is metal. Now, what types of metal can either of these machines do its job? So let's start off by saying both of these machines can almost take off all the rust on any type of metal. But let's talk about 1000 watts versus 50 watts. Your 1000 watts pretty much gets rid of all rust onto your metal or off of your metal and leaves you with a really smooth finish. But that is only at a certain power. If you up your power too much on certain metals, you end up chipping away the metal that's there that you actually need to be left behind. So instead of having a smooth surface, you've got pitted marks because you've used too much power on this machine. Whereas with the 50 watts, you don't have that issue where you can't take away too much metal because you've only got 50 watts to use. That being said, it does take all the rust off to a smooth surface but you just don't have that risk of running it too high and damaging the metal that you've got. So keep that in mind. Between these two, because you've got a 1000 watts versus a 50, you have to keep in mind that this one will actually destroy your metal if you're not careful. Okay, now let's talk about movability between these two machines. Now having a look at the size, besides the obvious, this one being much bigger, that one being much smaller, what can you actually do when it comes to taking your jobs outside of your work premises? Now, keep in mind, because you've got a thousand watts and this requires a 25 amp breaker, you almost pretty much can't take this anywhere you go. Because of its power restrictions and its size, you run a very high risk of damaging this machine, moving it elsewhere. Transporting this machine, there's a lot more components on the inside that could possibly break that you do not want to occur as it's gonna run you an expense later on. Now looking at our smaller machine, because this one only requires a 16 amp break and it's 50 watts, you can pretty much take this machine wherever you go. And because it's so light and movable, you pretty much don't have an issue taking this machine wherever you need to versus the 1000 watt. Now, don't forget there are components in either of these machines that you gotta worry about when transporting. For the 1000 watt, there is a chill inside that has water, not to mention the fact that you've got a vibrating lens inside your handle that could be damaged heavily with bumps along the road. Whereas the 50 watts pretty much has nothing inside that could be damaged to an extent as the 1000 watts. You do have a vibrating lens here. This one is a little bit more secured than the 1000 watts. There is no chiller inside and is cooled down by air. So there's not much that can go wrong when transporting this unit. So there aren't that many components in this machine that could break whilst transporting it. Next category is capability. What can these two machines do concerning its power? The 1000 watt versus the 50 watt, keep in mind this has got a lot more power over the smaller unit. That being said, what can it actually do? Other than taking off the rust of any material that you use, metal, it can also remove paint and some form of adhesive. So if you've got a few items that you need to 
get rid of rust as well as maybe powder coating or paint that's attached to a portion of it, this machine can do it without a problem. Versus your 50 watt, keep in mind, it's a lot less power than the 1000 watts. This can take off forms of paint and adhesive while doing the rust, but not as efficiently as fast as your 1000 watts. That's only because of its power difference. So we touched on the components earlier in the video, but I want to talk about in depth what each machine actually has. Your 1000 watt has a chiller on the inside. What does that mean? That means that you have to have distilled machine water into this machine so it can cool down everything efficiently so that it can run at 1000 watts. That being said, it also has an air pump and that air pump is just to make sure that it cools down the mirrors and certain other things that you need to cool down where the water doesn't. Whereas your 50 watt only has an air pump and that's all you have to worry about. Between these two machines, it is pretty much worry-free. Dividing them, this one is worry-free, this one has a few things to worry about. But overall, they both have pretty much the same components except for water and no water. So let's have a look at both of these machines and its handles. Let's start off with the 50 watt. This one has a button at the bottom that you depress in order to activate your laser beam. Now, inside its settings, you can either choose different widths, different shapes, and you can also choose the frequency, which is your power. That depends on how well it cleans the surface and its effectiveness from its distance. So, inside this control panel, you can choose your width, your shape, and your power suited specifically for the types of metal that you're using. Keep in mind that this one is a lot easier to use and, and move around compared to your bigger units here. Now let's have a look at our 1000 watt handle over here. This one is a lot smaller and a lot lighter. Um, it's got a grounding uh, clip here, just so that you don't have to earth yourself out anywhere. Uh, you've got your button to activate your laser. Now, when we're talking about how efficient these are in being used, this one also has the capabilities of changing the width of your beam, the shape and its frequency, which is your power. When starting up either of these machines, the 50 watts can start pretty much immediately and you can continue to use it without needing to wait. Whereas your 1000 watts has that chiller that has to reach a certain temperature before starting to use it, which is very key to maintaining your beam strength. Now, if it isn't chilled to the correct temperature, you'll have inconsistent beam waves, which is something you do not want. So pay attention to the chiller as it will make a world of difference when actually using this machine. Enough talking about its specs, let's actually compare both of them on metal. Okay, so the 50 watt uh, rust off machine, literally it is pretty much very simple. You make sure your on switch is on on the side, you go and switch it on and you depress your button. And there we have it, it is on and ready to go. Whereas our 1000 watt, you have to follow the instructions in the front on how to switch it on and switch it off. So to switch it on, you have to make sure your main switch is on at the back, follow the instructions. So we're gonna turn our key, switch on our controller card, then our water chiller, and then the laser itself. And then turning it off, it's pretty much just exactly the same, but backwards. Now, keep in mind, when you're switching it on, you have to make sure that your chiller is going to chill down and actually work. Now, if we have a look, we've got our two temperature gauges, we've got our high and our low, and you see the bottom temperature is what we desire to have. So this needs to get to that temperature at the bottom and vice versa, this has to be that temperature there. And another thing you have to keep in mind, we're gonna to move to the right hand side here, is that we must make sure we've got enough water in our chiller. Because if it is down below, we have serious issues of burning out our components. Now, because this has got a lot more components to it and the chiller needs to reach its desired temperature, we'll be back in 10 minutes because that's how long it takes to get ready. So let's firstly talk about our panel before we go and test. 
So once we've switched it on, we can see our current mode is zero. Now that is what we would say a profile. So you can set different profiles and save them so that you can use them specifically for your different types of metal later. So the first thing is we're going to look at our speed. Our speed is set at 13,000. Then our width, which is our beam, that is the width of your beam at 20 mils, the length at 100, and then our laser frequency is sitting at 199, our laser power, duty cycle, and spiral level. Now, all of these have different options to change. So let's go ahead and change a few of them and try it out, shall we? So we're gonna to go to set. From there, we can now start changing our settings. Now, the speed, I'm gonna leave exactly at that speed because I want it to move as fast as possible um, in this instance. Our length, I'm gonna leave because it's the biggest we can go. Our spiral level, that I'm gonna leave as is. The width, I'm gonna leave as is. What I'm going to change is our power. And now this specifically, I want to change so I can show you what the difference is between 20 and let's say 60%. So I'm going to push OK. I'm going to push OK. And we're going to push Start. And we are ready to use our rust off. Now, an interesting fact about our 50 watt laser is that when you're actually using it to rust off, if you put your hand in front of it while it's being used, it will not hurt you. Whereas the 1000 watt definitely will because of its increased power. So please keep in mind to use the relevant PPE equipment while using these lasers. Okay, using the current settings at 20% power, we're going to start off and see the effectiveness of our laser. As you can see, it is slowly taking off some rust, but at this rate, we'll be here for a while. So let's go back to our control panel and change some settings. Now that we're back at our control panel, all we have to do is push stop because we're not in lasering anymore. We're gonna push set again. Now I'm gonna make a few changes so we can start removing some of the rust off. And the first thing I wanna do is change my power. This I'm gonna be changing to 60%. Next, I wanna make the width or the length of our actual laser a lot shorter because in my opinion, it was too long there. So this, I'm going to change to 40 mils. Now the next thing I want to do is change my frequency. Now depending on what type of metal you're using will depend on your frequency. So for me I'm going to try and see if I can go any higher. No, that's the highest I can go. So I'm going to go down all the way to 100 and maybe we should start seeing different results. Keep in mind, you will have to play around with your different metals to find your different types of settings. Now I'm gonna push OK and we're ready to go. Now that we've changed our settings, we can immediately see a difference in our rusting off capabilities and you can see how quickly it takes that rust off without any issues whatsoever. Let's move over to another piece. And you can see it's cleaning that rust off ever so smoothly. Now, if you wanted to get a much smoother result, you would have to play around with the settings to get the perfect result. Now that we've had a chance to look at our 50 watt laser and its control panel, we are gonna do a very small demonstration between the two just to compare on mild steel so that you guys can get a small gist of it. But let's move over to our 1000 watt to see what that can do. Okay, let's first have a look at our chiller before we go ahead and look at our control panel. Okay, as you can see, the temperature is pretty much almost within range over here and over here. So let's go ahead to our control panel and start playing with some settings. So the first thing we wanna go over is our mode. Same as our 50 watt laser, you can save settings so that you can have them specifically for different types of material. 
you've got your peak power now that is the most important you don't want to overuse this unless you've got your circuit breaker sorted out if you don't you don't want to elevate this more than 50 percent your modulation frequency then you've got duty cycle wobble frequency and wobble diameter now all of these here really make a difference depending on which type of wobble you're actually using so here i've got a wave motion selected and there's all of the different types that you can select so for instance i'm going to leave it on this one because that is the most effective for most types of metal the next thing i want to have a look at and just make sure that our settings are correct for is our size of our beam and the speed at which i'm being going to be running it from left to right from there you can also change those two to be either smaller or much larger much faster um, from there depending on what type of wobble type you're using you will change these settings here so because i'm using a back and forward motion these settings here are pretty much accurate to what i need today so in order to get this thing going we need to make sure that we push our startup is on we've got a guard beam and we're going to switch on our settings for the right hand side here if you have this off these settings will not take an effect and you'll have a dot as a beam opposed to a shape so we want to have that on all right let's go and test it once you've switched this on, you want to try and be very careful not to touch the button to activate it while pointing it anywhere near someone as it want will on. damage someone's skin. Keep that in mind. Now with the 1000 watt, your actual distance between your handle and the material doesn't have to be as specific as your 50 watt. You can actually do it from a mild distance, going much closer or much further away now depending on your distance depends on how well it actually works so for this instance as we can see it works pretty much from this distance and it cleans that rust off like butter now if we had to change the shape you also get a different type of rust off Keep in mind when you're changing settings, you want to switch everything off so that nothing can go wrong while you're busy with this menu. So first of all, I want to change this to a circle with an inner circle and we're going to change our wobble diameter to 30. Now I want to take my peak power and I'm going to move that all the way up to 50%. Now that I've done that, I can now put my startup back on and the rest of it. Wait about 10 seconds and you're ready to go. And as you can see, that was a lot better in terms of effectiveness and much faster than our previous setting. So keep in mind, your settings do matter when it comes to rust off. Now that we've had a look at both of our Rustoff machines, our very powerful 1000 watts and our smaller 50 watt units, you can definitely tell the difference between the two and it's up to you to decide whether or not you want a unit that's fixed in place that you can do jobs very quickly and very big or a more versatile unit where you can take it almost anywhere you want to do jobs off site. That is completely up to you but all I can say is wow, these are truly remarkable machines. Laser Master. Master the laser.